death and departure of friends are the most austere and bitter accidents that can happen to a man in this life. To part forever. To forsake the world and all our friends. Tis the last and the greatest terror. It is most grievous, yet it may surely be withstood. We are never better or freer from cares than when we sleep. And yet death, which we so much avoid and lament, is but a perpetual sleep. We must so be gone sooner or later. All towns and cities have their periods and are consumed. Where is Troy itself now? Persepolis, Carthage, Sparta, Argus and those Grecian cities. Nor is the earth saved by its solid structure. The names only left, those at length forgotten, and are involved in perpetual night. Correct then, and comfort thyself in this, that we must necessarily die, and all die, that we shall rise again. Our second meeting will be much more pleasant than our departure was grievous. I but he was my most dear and loving friend, my sole friend. Who can blame my woe? For his part, thou dost him great injury to desire his longer life. Wilt thou have him crazed and sickly still, or freed from his miseries? Thou hast more need rejoice that he is gone. Come into a second place. You shall have an aged mother sighing for a son, a pretty child that died young. What? Wouldst thou have the laws of nature altered and him to live always? He died before his time, not yet come to the solstice of his age, a sweet, a fair, a witty, a loving child of great hope. But who can tell whether he would have been an honest man? He might have proved a thief, a rogue, a spendthrift, a disobedient son, vexed and galled thee more than all the world beside and broke thy heart. He is now gone to eternity as another Ganymede in the flower of his youth, as if he had risen from a feast before he was drunk. The longer he had lived, the worse he would have been. If he was naught, thou mayst be glad he is gone. If good, be glad thou had such a son.